This is my demonstration hive I have set up for wintering. And if we look at it, we can see that it does have the entrance reducer in on the bottom. In the winter, for winter, we turn them upside down and it is the full width. The boxes all have corks in them. The lower boxes, the top box has a one inch hole drilled in it and that's for their um, being able to have cleansing flights in the winter. Now I do have this set up here with some winter patties on. And a winter patty, this is a winter patty. It looks similar to a pollen patty. It's got wax paper on both sides. It's basically just sugar. Um, it does have a little bit of pollen in there just for a binder, but it doesn't uh, isn't enough to promote brood rearing. This is an emergency feeding situation. Um, what happens to a colony in Minnesota, it's very common for colonies to starve to death in late February and leaving a lot of honey. But what happens is, say for example, the queen, the bees move up, they usually move up in late January, early February, and say for example, they're on this frame. Now the queen could start, she'll start laying in February and the bees will do it, Keep the brood warm as they're feeding the brood they have to keep it warm it'll be 96 97 degrees right where the brood is so then what happens the brood can't move so it's there for 21 days and what happens then they'll deplete the honey here and then they have to move here and they'll deplete the honey off of this frame and then as time goes on maybe it's on this side and they've depleted the honey or it's not enough to sustain the cluster then all of a sudden we get a cold snap for several days around zero degrees at night and what happens then, the, the, the uh, cluster, which was way over here, contracts because they have to keep that brood at that temperature and they can't do it with a loose cluster. They need a tighter cluster. Well, now they're not on food anymore. They've depleted all that food. So that's the scenario for starvation and they would normally starve to death. Now, if we use this uh, winter patty or it could be a candy board or something similar, but these are very convenient. This is a winter patty. I like putting two of them on because you never know. Is my cluster going to be here? Is it going to be here? Is it going to be here? You just don't know. So you put two of them side by side and basically you should have it covered. Um, this is just an emergency measure. It isn't anything you could feed steady. They wouldn't make it. This is just something to get them through a hump. And it's uh, cheap insurance. They're $250 each. Uh, compare it better than buying a package for $100 that you could have prevented it by having something like this. Now, if you were, if you went out there and looked at your, you put the, I always put these on when I put the wrap on, usually around uh, sometime in November. I usually do it around Thanksgiving, but any time after the first or the first November is fine. Um, but if you went out and just peek every once in a while, I like looking at them in January. If your bees are on these and they're eating these in earlier January, just a quick peek. Just look underneath the covers. You just got to go out there and peek. Are they there? Yes, they are. Bees aren't there yet. Okay. But you go out there and in late January, you say, oh, yeah, look at that. The bees are there. And, oh, they've eaten one. Well, you can add another one at that point. Very simple. But if you feel they need more than that, they don't have enough. They need a little bit more and it's too early to feed. You could put a shim on <clears throat> that this shim just will raise your roof up a little bit. But now we have some distance there and we could put on more patties. And you could stack them up like this at, at you know, have several of them and it gives them more food. Now, if we do this and we lift this box up, now our hole is going to be different. It won't line up here. We have to elongate out the cutout on the cardboard cover, which is no big deal. So for winter though, just go into it like this without a shim. And then it's your inner cover, your moisture board. And when you put these cardboard boxes on, this back flap is folded down against the back because we need that open to vent, <coughs> vent the cover. And then we just fold the flaps over like that. And just rest this on top with a rock. Now a person could come back, like I say, and just check this in late January. If they've consumed the patties, add some more right away. If they haven't, just look again in around February 10th or so. 
Look again, a quick ch check. Are they if they've eaten it, replace it. Are they are they eating it? If they are eating it, I would just give them one right next to the one they're eating. And then <clears throat> check it again about a week later, just cuz that's the time. If the weather's going to get cold, take the time. You know what's coming in, go out there and check that. And if they need it, you add it then. Add more right there, but before the winter the cold weather hits. And maybe it's enough to get your colony past that cold weather. It's cheaper to buy the pollen patties than to buy a new package. And uh, they do work. They, they uh, are affordable. And it's something a person can do to possibly save your bacon in February. Thanks for watching.